user defined value types allows you to rename a value type and also treat it as a new type. In this video, I'll cover the syntax and give you some examples. To define a user defined value type, we will first type type and then followed by the name of this type. For example, let's say timestamp. So we're creating a type called timestamp. And this will be ADS4 is, let's say, uint64. Here we're saying we're going to define a type called timestamp and the underlying value is uint64. I'll create another user-defined value type that we'll be using in the example. So say type, let's call this duration, is again uint64. Okay, so how do we actually use this in our contract? Let's create a contract. Contract example. Let's create a function. Example user define value type. To initialize a variable of type timestamp, we will say timestamp. Let's call this t is equal to. And to create a variable of type timestamp, we will say timestamp dot wrap. And then inside here, we will need to put in the value type the underlying value type that this timestamp is. The underlying value type is a unit 64. So inside this wrap, we'll need to put in some kind of value of unit 64. For example, let's cast block.timestamp into unit 64. Unit 64 block.timestamp. Let's look at another example. Let's say duration. Let's call this D is equal to. Again, we'll say duration dot wrap. And let's wrap the number one. Unit 64 1. These are two examples of how to create user defined value types. How about the other way around? Let's say that we have a user defined value type and we want to get the underlying value. Well, the thing that we'll need to do is call unwrap. Given t, let's say we want to get this underlying value type. Let's call this unit 64 since the underlying value type for timestamp is unit 64. Let's call this t u d 4 is equal to. Again, we'll need to call timestamp dot and we'll need to call the function on wrap passing in the user defined value type. The user defined value type is t. This will take the user defined value type t and then sort of cast it back into uint64. So another example, let's say uint64. Let's unwrap the duration d. The underlying value type is uint64. So I'll name this d u64 or equals duration dot unwrap d. So these are some examples of how to create a user defined value type and how to cast it back into the underlying value type. But how are these user defined value types useful? To see the usefulness of user defined value type, let's first take a look at a real world example. So to begin with, let's say that I have a library. Let's call this div clock basic. And inside here, you have a function. Let's call this function wrap. It's going to take in two inputs, uint64 duration and uint64 timestamp. This will be internal. Peer returns uint128. I'll call this clock. So what this function is going to do is it's going to return uint128. And for the first 64 bits, it's going to store duration. And for the next 64 bits, it's going to store timestamp. So for 64 bits of duration, followed by 64 bits of timestamp. And we will put this into a uint128. Uint128 has 128 bits. 64 bits plus 64 bits is also 128 bits. So we can fit duration and timestamp into a uint128. And we'll name this variable clock. I'll use assembly to put two uint64 into one uint128, say assembly. And we'll say clock is equal to, we'll need to put duration on the left. So we'll need to do a shift left, shift left by 64. So say 0x40 duration. And to this, we'll add timestamp or timestamp. So what this code is doing is to the first 64 bits, starting from the left and going right of uint128, it's going to store duration. And for the next 64 bits, again, starting from the left and going right, it's going to store timestamp. To use this function, let's create a function, say function example live clock basic public. So let's say that we have some kind of duration. 
In this example, duration is unit 64 and timestamp is also unit 64. Say unit 64, let's call this D is equal to 1 and unit 64 T is equal to casting block dot timestamp unit 64 block dot timestamp. Now to use this function called wrap, what we need to do is call the function with clock basic dot wrap and then passing in these two inputs duration and timestamp for example d and t now here's one problem that can happen since both d and t are unit 64 if we accidentally call lib clock basic dot wrap with t and then d so the order the inputs are wrong this code will still compile and also it will execute however if you look at the logic we're passing in for the duration timestamp and for the timestamp duration. So here we made a mistake by passing in the wrong order of inputs, but the code still compiles. But this accident will never happen if you use user defined data type. So let me give you an example. Let's first create another type, type clock is uint128. Then we'll create a library, library div clock. And then let's also create a function called function wrap. It's going to take in two user defined data type, duration and then timestamp. Duration D and then timestamp T. This function will be internal, peer returns, and instead of returning you into one to eight, we'll return the user defined data type called clock. This function is going to do the same thing as what we did over here. So we can just simply copy this code. And inside the assembly, the duration and the timestamp are both treated as bytes 32. So this logic still works. Okay, so let's now use this lib clock and then go through this same example again. Copy this, and then I'll paste it here. We already defined what timestamp and duration is, so we won't need this. And then let's call the function lib clock wrap and then lib clock wrap again. The first code calls wrap passing in duration and timestamp. And as you can see from the function definition, this is the correct way to use this function. So if we hit control S, the contract compiles. However, if we try to pass in the input in the wrong order, so we're passing in timestamp and then duration, you can see that the contract does not compile. So that's one benefit of using user defined value type. If you accidentally make a mistake of passing in the inputs into a function in the wrong order, in our simple library, it didn't catch that error. However, for the user-defined value type example, the code did not compile. 